The picture element is part of the HTML5 specification and is useful for implementing responsive images. It is not alone. The specification also describes the use of the source set and sizes attributes. While all can be made to work, I have found that the relatively simple implementation of the picture element saves time and frustration. Keep in mind that I am intentionally not discussing pixel-dense images due to a philosophical argument, namely, increasing the size of images to load into high-density mobile devices defeats the purpose of delivering fast, lightweight images to conserve bandwidth. As a result, this video demonstrates what I believe to be a simple, easy-to-understand approach to responsive images. Step 1. Prepare the images to fit the layout of the web page. In this video, I am not demonstrating the layout, just the delivery of the images. And for this example, I have prepared three versions of the same image. All have been cropped, sized, and optimized. One version is 250 pixels wide, a second is 400 pixels, and the last is 600 pixels. All are JPEG images. Step two, in my web page, I have created the picture element and included within it an image element with the smallest version of the image as its source and added an appropriate alt text. When the code is run in the browser, the small image is delivered as seen in the browser and shown in the network tab of the developer tools. Step three, I will add a child source element and include in it a source set attribute with the path to the different sized version of the image. Also, a media attribute is added that contains a media query specifying the viewport size that must be true for this image to be used. Because I am specifying three different possibilities of images, I have included a range, minimum to maximum, that will be used for this image. When tested, you'll notice that the smallest image is delivered for small screens. The larger image is used for the specified range, but on larger screens, the smallest image is once again delivered. This is admittedly strange behavior, but it is a result of the media query. Finally, a second source element will be added with its own source set and media attributes. However, the media query for this image only includes a min width value that is just larger than the range of the first source element. By so doing, the code takes a mobile-first approach and delivers the smallest, lightest image to small screen devices. As screen sizes increase, the next largest image is delivered, and finally, on the largest screens, the largest and heaviest of our images is delivered, as shown in the Network tab of the Developer Tool. I have used three versions of the image. This could be done easy for two images or more than three. But each situation is slightly different and your code must adapt to your own needs. The implementation is, as stated before, relatively straightforward and easy to understand. I hope that it is easy enough that you'll feel comfortable using responsive images in your next project.